typical in democratic school environments is uh, some some way of making collective decisions together you know democratic process to do that do you have similar set up yeah we are also democratically run but we use a form of democracy called sociocracy oh, cool. so yeah sociocracy is not majority rule so mm -hmm. we do it based on consent i even drew you a little <laughs> of how it works hopefully oh it looks like it's backwards on my screen um but this first circle here is your zone of preference right okay. and then outside of that is your zone of tolerance and then is your objection mm. so we we strive to integrate the objections into the decision so that everybody has a voice in the decision making process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have a good example of it where we ended up not choosing what the proposal was. So somebody said, hey, we should get an axolotl, you know, those little water yeah. salamanders. And everybody was like, woohoo, and they raised their hands. And if majority of rules had been our method of governance, we all would have won, right? And so one, we had one objection. And so when we, we do it in rounds, so everybody has a chance to speak, and that's that's the first stage where we flush out the proposal. Everybody has a, a voice in it. And so this one person was like, well, who's going to feed it on the weekends and who's going to take it to the vet? And is it legal to even have one? And who's going to clean out the tank? Because I don't want to touch that poop. And then as soon as that person started talking about it, everybody kind of came down and they moved out of that super excited zone of preference and they moved out of their zone of tolerance into objection too. So mm -hmm. we didn't get an axolotl. Another one we had was we have a part-time option too at Embark mm. and we used to have it set. You had to pick your days. So mm. let's say you part -time, were part-time and you only could come on Monday and Wednesday. Well, somebody came in with a proposal and said, well, why can't we just come whenever we want, but only up to two days? And so there were a bunch of objections because people were saying, well, what if there's too many people on a certain day? And what if you made a commitment to a volunteer that's teaching a class? Mm. And those were these objections. And so what we ended up doing was coming up with when everybody had a chance to flush it out and speak about it. All right, well, maybe you'll come, you'll make that commitment to the volunteer and you'll be there for that day, but then you can pick a different day if you don't have a commitment that you need to honor. And then we moved the objections into zone of tolerance. So it wasn't that everybody was super excited about it and it was their preference, but they were willing to try it. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part about sociocracy is it's good enough for now, safe enough to try, and you can always come back and fix it. So mm -hmm. if you find mm -hmm. that it's not working, you can bring it back to the table. Nice, nice. And that also sets up that sort of feedback that that it's deliberately designed for the feedback of, first, we're going to we're gonna listen to the initial reactions, but then we're going to have the feedback, and, and then a decision will be made, or, or a you know, something will be tried, but then there's a deliberate design of come back and, and review and see how it's going, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so sometimes the decision can't be made then. Right. So we recently had ants. <laughs> we had an oh. ant problem because people weren't cleaning up after themselves. And each person at Embark has a cleaning job and people mm. weren't doing their jobs. So we had, it's very rare, none of our programming is compulsory. So if we have something big, somebody can call a mandatory meeting. And so somebody called a mandatory meeting about the cleaning. Mm. And so we had a great big meeting about it. And all the people at the meeting didn't want to be part of the problem solving of the cleaning. They all sort of gave their feedback, but they didn't want to put together the proposal, but seven people did. So seven mm. people volunteered to be part of a cleaning circle. So the bigger community meeting circle split off into a smaller cleaning circle. Mm. So that group on their own worked out a proposal of what the cleaning would look like. And then they brought it back to the next community meetup that we had to pitch this proposal, get feedback from anybody, and then we voted on it. And our voting is either consent or objection. And so since there were no objections, it passed through. So cleaning is in the domain of the cleaning circle, but if it changes in a way that impacts the wider community, it comes back to the big community circle. Okay. And how big is your community? How many like staff, students? So total, we have 29 staff and students. We call our students members because we're trying to move away from the schoolish way of thinking. Sure. <laughs> and then we have about 13 different volunteers that come in and they, they teach different classes and they lead different you know, workshops and things like that. But the governance is within the staff and the, the members themselves. 
it is small, smaller than other schools. And we don't want to go past 30, 35 members because then, as you can imagine, sociocratic decision making becomes a lot heavier, a lot harder to do. Yeah. So we we work well within that small framework. And and what is your age range of members? Right now we're ages 10 to 18 and we had had a six year old for a little bit, um, but he was sort of on his own. The next oldest person was 12. And so when we got feedback from him that he didn't want to return to Embark, community meeting came up with another policy, which is the, whatever our youngest member is, we can accept somebody one year younger than that down to six years old so that that mm. person doesn't feel so alone. Even though people really don't know each other's ages, we're totally age mixed. We don't segregate anybody by age at Embark. But if you're the only six year old, it can you can feel it. Kind so. of obvious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know in uh, in some other schools, they well, specifically the Village Free School at the time when I was doing some work with them years ago, is they just they set they, they ran from I think five to eighteen, but what they did was that they found they wanted to maintain a certain balance, so they set some ratio limit, mm. so that so that they would have, you know, they could be heavy on one age group, but they couldn't, like like you couldn't just de enroll all the teenagers or whatever or the youngers either way you know it can go either way sometimes. Yeah. And so they they just set some some boundaries around maximum number of i think it was the first one they had to maximum was the youngers mm -hmm. and then eventually i think they had to maximize you know had a maximum on their teenagers or something but but you know those dynamics change over time so they but that's how they did it was kind of ratio but that's an interesting solution too yeah um, yeah i like that one we tried that one too with a cohort of ages mm -hmm. and then but then this is our current policy Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's another aspect, the key aspect, I think, of a lot of these centers is that this is what works for now and it's nothing mm -hmm. set in stone. So, yep. Very and cool. it changes through the years because right. people change and their needs change. So we we are very flexible. And so sometimes it can be it can be a little challenging to explain how things work when we know that a new group of people can come through and say, hey, why don't we try this? What do you think about this? Right. right. <laughs> This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Burr.